Welcome to the Back to the Bricks podcast, a new podcast about sports, faith, and culture. I'm Justin. And I'm Nick. Close friends turn mid-major rivals. Join us as we venture back to the Bricks. Welcome back to the Bricks. We are super excited to be joined by Coach Mike Serrano, Director of Strength and Conditioning for the Louisville Football Cardinals. Um, Coach Mike, thank you for joining us. And just first of all, what's life been like for you um, during this quarantine as a coach and maybe even as like a as a dad and a husband what's it been like for you well first off I appreciate you guys having me and uh, this is awesome because it breaks up the monotony of the day Uh, you know what I would say is you know each day for me is pretty typical when I'm at work and we're training so you know but there's a little nuance to the day and we like to have fun and compete. That's, that's the thing I miss most is just coming to work and competing with the guys and with the staff and the coaching staff. But I'll tell you, it's been a, you know, it's been a heck of a blessing because I've been telling people like I really took for granted what my wife does for me, my son and my family. Um, you know, within the first week, I'm like, Holy cow, this is like, how do you do it? You know? And, I think my job's hard coming to work every day and trying to manipulate and get 150 people, you know, throughout through the day and have the right message and the right culture, this, that, and the other thing, and then work hard and break thresholds and stuff like that. So it's been a blessing, one, to be around my family and, and you know, and help raise my son for the first time in his two and a half years. So uh, that's been great. But, you know, there's – the, the things I miss, like our guys are coming back next week and I can't wait to get around them. And, you know, it's going to be different, but, you know, I miss that. That I mean, that's why I do this is to kind of keep that edge that I had as a 21 to 18 to 21 year old, you know. So I just want to be around the guys, mentor them again. So, but, you know, it's been a blessing. Yeah, I think I think just listening to you right there, it, it speaks volumes of what I've heard and seen from the program in just one year under Satterfield of the culture aspect. You didn't talk once about drills. You didn't talk once about lifting weights. You talked about culture and mentoring. And I think, I think at least from a fan perspective, that's why we're so encouraged to, you know, more than a talent thing, we're more encouraged by the coaching staff mentoring 150 guys, like you said. There's no doubt about it. When I talk to the recruits, especially talk to their families, and I just got off the phone with a quarterback from Texas a couple hours ago. And I, you know, I told him and his mom, I said, listen, it, it's not about creating football players, it's about creating men. And we're going to get you in the later stages of your maturity growth. And we're going to, you know, educate and facilitate and hopefully create habits that are going to last you for the rest of your life. Uh, and because we do those things in a certain way, we're going to have a heck of a football player as well. So sometimes, like you said, the talent level really doesn't matter. Uh, but that's why we preach attitude, effort, love, trust, positivity, uh, you name it, we say it. So, uh, but that's what it's about. It's about creating men. You know, it's, it's 30 years down the line. It's not every Saturday in the fall. Uh, now, certainly those are fun. And, you know, we love winning and we don't really talk about losing much. We talk about learning. Uh, but, you know, those are fun. But, I mean, it's the relationships, the, the phone calls 10 years down the line, building to the weddings and seeing the sons and daughters born is really why we do this thing. Yeah, absolutely. That that's yeah, that's that's fantastic. And again, as a fan personally, like I'd love to hear that more. And I think even coming off of some years of bad football, but more than that, just like bad culture and bad taste in your mouth as a fan. And there's nothing more more exciting than a culture that's winning, you know, both off the field and on the field. And um, I'll let Justin ask you some more specific questions about football. Yeah, so um, I have some connections with some with some area high school football coaches, head coaches, assistant coaches. So I, I gathered them together and wanted them to tell me what they wanted me to ask you kind of thing about the weight room or specific and those kind of things. So um, these questions come from them, um, and I think there's some, there's some pretty good questions. So you weight room guys are always seen as being these crazy dudes on the sideline with all kinds of energy and, and in the weight room and stuff like that. How do you – how do you keep the juice, as we say, day day to day in that weight room setting? Man, I wake, I wake up. <laughs> the hardest part of my day is hoping my alarm goes off. That's the scariest <laughs> part of my day. Uh, you know, I, I, I tell the guys I wake up at 4.07 every day. I mean, it don't matter what day it is. It's 4.07, the alarm is going off. Don't ask me why 4.07. That's just the time 12 years ago I chose. And, 
my wife will tell you I'm one of those people, and Coach Satterfield and the guys will tell you I, I, I can't sit down. Like, right now it's tough to sit down. Uh, so that's how I keep the juice. But more importantly, I think I go back to when, you know, I was, you know, I was developing as a young man, a football player, a professional. Uh, there was people that I had to lean on my whole development. And, you know, raised in Boston and, and, and you know, parents working hard multiple jobs or something and thing. I had to lean on people to mentor me and my coaches, uh, my teammates, the older guys on the team, they really had an impact on me. So again, it comes back to, to being one of those people. Like, you know, not, not every day do people wake up in a good mood or are having a great day. So they need someone there all the time. And um, generally, you know, our guys, you know, you know, th they don't wake up every day great what we do is extremely hard you know it's ordinary people can't wake up and do the things that we ask our players to do so they're going to have bad days they're going to have great days um we remind them of those great days and when they're having a bad day but more importantly they need someone to talk to so you know i wake up every day and i look in the mirror and i tell tell myself every single day and i've told the players this is there's 150 people in the organization counting on me to do a good job so i cannot have a bad day that doesn't mean I don't have bad days and there's 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 crappy stuff going on in my life. There is, but um, I can control the controllables. So that's what we do and that's what we teach our guys to do every day. And for me, that's, you know, I'm 35 years old. I can still jump around and laugh and joke with the best of them. So uh, that's what I like to do. That's awesome. I've been around some – had the opportunity to be around some good programs at the high school level. And all those programs said what you said there. All you can do is control the controllables. You can't worry about all the other things. You just got to do what you can do and move on and, and, and control what you can control. So right. one, of the, one of the other questions that came in was, if you could do one lift for football and only one, what would it be? Man, I debate this all the time. You know, a lot of people say squat, and I love squats. Uh, but, I, you know, in kind of this pandemic has proven it, like, we didn't have much when I was growing up. Like, I couldn't always get over to the Boys and go Girls Club. So uh, my trainer, my dad, my coaches, they had me push a truck. And I remember the first day I got to that parking lot, and they were like, uh, let's do this 10 times for 100 yards. And I was like, you got to be crazy. And, uh, you know, the first few times, waking up in the middle of the night, full body cramps, just absolutely miserable. Probably had rhabdo, you know, but they didn't know about rhabdo back then. So I'm going to say pushing something. Um, and, and, and for a few reasons, you still get that lower pop, pop, uh, body piston strength from the legs, interiorly, posteriorly. Um, it's great. It's a unilateral exercise. And, you know, that, that prehabs a lot of injuries in our lower half that football players tend to get. But then it also works you cardiovascularly um, and those those uh, metabolic systems within your your body. So that and then thirdly, man, it is it gets you here and it gets you right here. So that, those are the things that we preach the most, like getting under a heavy squat is great, uh, but we do nothing vertically on a football field. So uh, we you know, if it's one thing, I'm going to push a heavy sled or push a car or pull something like that. So. That's my exercise. It's a little outside the box, and most strength coaches will say, but, uh, you know, when I got in trouble at home, my dad put a tie around my neck and told me to do 300 squats. So um, I'm kind of tired of squats at 35 now. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. That's funny. So there's been a big debate on Twitter um, and, and a lot of other places about this study that came out and said that hands on the knees isn't a bad thing and being a coach and I'm sure you've been there too I've, I've been around plenty of guys I've, I've told plenty of guys hey get your hands off your knees stand up it's bad air down there kind of thing so now all these players are coming back saying see coach I told you like all this stuff was wrong so what are your thoughts um, on hands hands on knees for guys well uh... Let me tell you how I manipulate this with my team. So, yeah, I understand the studies and getting more air and this, that, and the other thing and open up the cap layer. I'm there with you. But when it comes time for me to you to line up across from each other, we're not going to show any weakness. Uh, and that, for me, is a weak position. Whether it's your hands on your head, your hands on your hips, your hands on your knees, taking one knee, leaning on the water cooler, 
it don't matter. As men, we're not gonna we're not gonna show weak position, uh, especially when we're in the when we're in, when we're faced we're in the middle of war or battle. Um, so uh, you know, some people might frown upon this, but our guys have embraced it. They always have. Anytime any of our players shows a weak position, um, now unless it's really seriously, you know, and they might have something going on, and then maybe they didn't eat or something, they hit two up downs. Uh, if you can do two up downs, there's no reason to put your hands on your knees. You can, there's no reason to put your hands on your hips or your head. Uh, stand there like a man. Uh, get your mind right and keep on going. So uh, I don't personally believe in it, but it's not because of the science-based uh, studies. It's because it's it's mono a mono, me versus you or us versus us. And sometimes I remember growing up in the heat of battle or during a game, you know, and they're sucking wind and, you know, I could say something or stand there and, and, and tell them I ain't tired. You know, I got the best of them. So uh, we, we, te we ingrate it in them. We teach them not to do it. Uh, you know, I think toughness is a, is a characteristic you can teach. Uh, uh, it's not always given, you know, born, you're not always born with it. Uh, I think we can teach it. And a lot of times that all that has to be is articulated. Um, you know, because these kids, your body, your mind can do amazing, amazing things. And you just got to make sure you have some positive reinforcement behind it and uh, understand the why we do things. And I think that the, the players around here embrace that and they always have. So that's something that part of our program we've never allowed. Now, of course, it happens, but what's two up downs? Right. Yeah. And being a coach, I've been in the press box before and seen um the defense with their hands on their hips or whatever and said boys this drive if, if we get them this drive they're done because it, it goes into that whole thing of mental toughness and, and seeing when an opponent is is done for because of those positions so i i completely agree with you there coach yeah if i could get off topic for a second i mean uh yeah. when puma pass went down last year and we're you know we we'd gone down 21 nothing at uh florida state no we didn't end up winning the game um we but we from 21 nothing, we came back, and we're ahead. Um, some things didn't go the right way. The ball didn't bounce the right way down the towards the end of the game there, and, and we end up losing. But I remember we were walking from the third quarter to the fourth quarter, and Puma was in his boot, and he put his arm around me and goes, Coach, everything you've done is for a reason. We're all we're all starting to figure that out right now. He goes, we're going to outlast these guys. We might not win the game, uh, but we can outlast them. Uh, we got the leg up on them because we're mentally tough. And, uh, you know, it's reasons like that right there. Uh, you know, and then, you know, on a Sunday we came in after the loss and we sat down in the weight room and we talked about it. And Puma got in front of the team and he, he told them what he said to the team, to me, and he, he articulated to the guys why we do things the way we, we do it. And, uh, you know, it was kind of that light bulb went off and you know the kids start to understand and get it you know it's not always the talent level it's not always the talent level it, it very rarely is to be honest with you absolutely and that's the whole process thing so many so many people are like what what is the process well you don't know it till you're in it and until you figure out what it is kind of thing so yeah that's awesome that's right. when that when that stuff pays off so um what exercises or lift do you do to develop um, explosive hips or bottom halves for your guys? I think I think what this guy was trying to ask is like when you're going rolling those hips through on a tackle, what do you work through to get guys with those explosive hips? Yeah, so we do a lot of uh, strength speed complexes. So um, unless you're like we're an Olympic based program, so we do everything pretty much on our feet except when we bench press and do our auxiliary work. Uh, but we do we do all we do all our lower body exercise on our feet like we don't get on leg presses or machines like that. Um, so what I mean by speed strength or strength speed or sometimes even speed strength is a lot of times in our lifting technique isn't perfect. You know, Olympic lifters are Olympic lifters for a reason. Uh, they're the best at the world at their technique. Uh, not all the time is our technique great. Now we work on it every single day. But, you know, we got we to gotta find ways to um, get our biggest bang for the buck. So what we'll do a lot is we'll load up an exercise, whether it's a clean or squat or something with triple extension. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll superset it with a speed exercise, whether that be a jump, um, a loaded hip, uh, barbell hip thruster, 
something along those lines. So now we are tricking the central nervous system from lifting a load at a speed, but then going max velocity. And what we'll see there is better triple extension. Because uh, a lot of times what athletes do is, you know, they're interiorly strong. So, you know, they tend to use their knees and their quads as their, um, their, their, their power developers are putting force to the ground instead of using their glutes. Um, so we'll see the glutes fire usually if they're not doing it correctly within their clean or squat technique and stuff like that when we go to jump them or do, do a lighter weight at a max velocity. So that's how we do it. Uh, it's not the end all be all, you know, uh, I don't think the way we do things is always the right way. Uh, that's just the way we've done it. So, uh, so strength, speed or speed, strength complex is usually how we get it done. Perfect. Uh, two kind of rapid fire questions here real quick. Just, just your personal preference. Um, first one, front squat or back squat? Back squat. I don't program front squats. Okay. And then the second one is hang clean or power clean? power clean i want that max effort punch every every snap they get plenty of rest in between snaps right perfect um and then i'll ask you one more and then we'll throw it back back up to nick here so how do you change a program um like you said like you guys are in the process of changing louisville how do you change a program through the weight room um through what you do every day oh wow that's a loaded question man consistency Love, trust, positivity, constructive criticism. Um, but I think most importantly, trust. Um, you know, we are not just me, but the staff, Coach Satterfield. When we say it, we mean it and we do it. Um, and we hold everyone accountable. It don't matter if you're the best player on the team or the worst player on the team. Um, if you're a Heisman Trophy winner or, you know, if you're, you're just a scout team member. Um, and then we we do what we preach um i think that's really really important um so you know we again i told you about the two up downs you know if our guys screw up you know whether it's a, a focus issue this that and the other thing they were screwing around they hit two up downs it's it means two up downs so if i screw up i hit two up downs um if my staff screws up they hit two up uh, live it, breathe it, you know, say it, live it, breathe it. Um, I think that's the only way to do it. Don't treat everyone the same. It starts with the relationships. They, when they know you care, they start to care. Um, and that, and that's the biggest thing. I think it took really, to be honest with you, probably five months, five months for us to get everyone bought in and for them to trust us. When we first came here, I don't think I have it on my wrist, but we, you know, we put trust on everything. Um, and you know, just like any relationship, you can't trust a person right off the bat. You got to build that trust and that's how you, you own the ground you walk on. It's left over right every single day. And if, if you're not true with your words and your actions, then they'll figure it out and they'll beat you up or they won't listen. They won't be accountable. They won't be disciplined. So I think that's the major thing, but then also have fun. I mean, it, this, this is too hard right there's 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 too much money on there's too much uh uh there there's too much media attention you know you're supposed to have fun in life there is no rewind but like i don't get to do yesterday again uh let's have fun and do it the right way and do it for the right reasons so as long as you get that message across every single day hold everyone accountable to that and i think lastly be extremely transparent like i think this day and age and even me included, like people hate transparency. You know, the truth hurts. You know, I tell the guys, if I'm, you know, if I'm about to get, be hard on someone, Hey guys, I'm fat, bald, and slow. You know, uh, my time is over with. So, you know, that's the truth. The truth hurts. Like I used to be something that I'm not anymore, you know? So if you're doing this wrong, it's okay, but let's fix it. Let's learn from it and let's keep on going. You know, you rather fail a thousand times. Uh, than be successful because you learn so much more. So just be transparent. You know, uh, there, there's no reason to hide anything. Uh, and there's also no reason to continue to beat people up about it. You know, let's, you know, make the constructive criticism, criticism correction and then be positive. Let's keep it moving. So that's what we did. That's what we always do. 
Um, you know, so it, it it's you kind of just gotta walk that line. You know, it's like the Navy SEALs say, own the ground you walk on. You know, everyone here owns the ground they work on walk on. I know my weaknesses, I know my strengths. Coach Satterfield knows his weaknesses, he knows his strengths, and we kind of play it off each other and we do a great job doing it. And uh, there's not one kid in our program that can't say that we're consistent and we don't love them because we do. It doesn't matter if they screw up the worst they've ever screwed up in their life. The next day we're going to hug them up. So, uh, and people had to do that for me in life. And they, you know, coach Satterfield has to do it for me sometimes still. So and my wife and, and everyone, and we each got each other's back. So that's what it's about. It's hard to put your finger on it, but it ain't, it ain't, it ain't the perfect plan all the time. So we, we just try to figure out day by day. Absolutely. I was going to ask you, I think you started to answer the question, but in what ways, um, do you fully address top to bottom guys in the weight room? How, how do you get the guy who's going to play three or four snaps a week and the starting tailback to do the exact same work effort and, you know, the effort and bring just like bring, bring the juice. Like we talked about, how do you do that on a day in day out basis for all of the guys in the program? Well, they're going to compete against each other and, you know, not, not so much me doing it. I think coach Satterfield and staff, um, you know, some of our best players in our program the last seven years uh, have been walk-ons. They started as walk-ons and they've earned scholarships. Um, and, you know, kids see that, you know, everything in this program is earned. So if they continue to work hard, they continue to break the rock. People like to say, do it day in and day out. They're going to be successful. Uh, I think a lot of times, a lot of people get at other programs might get lost in the recruiting and I recruited this guy, he should play. It's not like that. Everyone's everyone, you know what I mean? Everyone's got the same chance. It don't matter if you're a five-star guy or a, a zero-star guy. You all have a chance to play here and be successful, but you earn it day in and day out. And uh, we set guidelines, we set standards, um, and we keep it transparent. You know, if you're great, you're great. If you're not, so be it. Be great the next day or be great the next hour or be great the next rep. So – um, that's how we do it. You know, uh, no one gets treated differently. Absolutely. I was going to kind of go just a little bit of a left turn of hearing you talk more about culture and more about buy-in. How do you, how do you prep for a season, season two at Louisville, um, with Satterfield where you have a lot more, um, media, right? You have a lot more expectation, um, to, to be a good ball club. I mean, I think, I think as a fan last year, especially I was hoping we'd win maybe six games, maybe five games. And I loved everything coming out about the culture. Loved it. But we wanted to win football games, right? And yeah. then we came out and competed with Notre Dame for the majority of that football game night one. And I think that kind of changed the expectations, at, at least as a fan. So how do you deal with convincing guys that we still got to buy in every day in order to fully build up this program? Yeah, it's funny. We, uh, so we have a, a, a leadership group we call 10 Strong. And usually it's only 10 players, one guy from every position group that sits down with me coach Satterfield and now Chris Morgan, our FCA pastor. Um, and that came up. I said, how, and the question was, coach, how, how do we, how do we live up to expectations? Well, the answer for us is easy. We can control the controllables. If we continue to do that day in and day out, uh, we'll be fine. We did it last year. You should learn from every scenario last year, success, failure, it doesn't matter. We grow on that every single year. What you were freshman year versus what you were senior year, junior year, all right, it's going to be totally different. Your level of maturity is going to rise. You're going to understand the re the why more, um, and then your why is going to elevate. So uh, living up to expectations, it, it's something coaches might think about, uh, but not in this program. You know, we wake up, the alarm goes off. Uh, we, we wake up and we do it over again. Uh, our schedule never changes, you know. Um, you know, besides the pandemic, you know, what's today, Thursday? You know, Thursday, this date last year, we knew exactly what we're doing. Uh, and, you know, come Saturday, the first game, we know exactly what we're going to do. The game plan might change, but we know exactly how we want to take the line. Um, so, you know, some years you might win more. Some years you might lose more. Uh, but that happens, you know, Coach Satterfield always says that winning ain't easy. You know, if if winning was easy, we'd all be successful, uh, but we're not. So uh, we'll just keep at it, keep, uh, you know, carry wood and, uh, sorry, carry water and chop wood or 
chop wood and carry water. I forget what the book's called, but that's what we read the first year with the, the 10 strong group. And that's what we're going to keep doing. We're going to build off that. And, you know, we're going to have a, uh, a mantra every single year that we think we can get better at uh, as a whole and kind of in the masses, not so much detail, but in the masses. And uh, we're going to hang our hat on that. And then we're going to build a tradition. Absolutely. That's kind of, I'll kind of wrap up the, wrap up the whole thing here. Um, I just wanted to ask you, how does being in a program with a guy like coach Satterfield just influence your, your personal walk? Like how does it change the way that you show up to, to your job every day? I just, there were so many images from last year. Um, I think, think through the image we, we saw of Satterfield the first day in front of the players. And he said, you know, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. You know, this is my program. You're going to be my guys to like the first win of the season. And we're bouncing around in the locker room and getting crazy on the sideline. How, what, what happened there and what, what really got the guys to buy in one and two, how does, how does he get you to buy in every day as well? Oh man, if I didn't buy in, I'd probably be fired. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I think, you know, just the, he owns the ground he walks on. Like I said earlier, he knows his weaknesses and he knows his strengths. Um, you know, I think one of his strengths is patience. Like he never gives up on anyone. Um, and that's kind of been cool for me to see. Like I, early on in my career, you know, I was one of those coaches that probably writ, wrote players off pretty quickly. You know, if they couldn't pass a conditioning test or if they weren't strong enough or, you know, they're a third string. And Coach Satterfield, he never does that. He's extremely patient. Uh, in all aspects of his life, you know, especially development with his football program. So I think, you know, learning from him, the patient part of it and never giving up on people. Uh, and, you know, he, you know, he reminds me that people never give up, gave up on me. And that's why I'm at where I'm at today. So um, and we'll continue to grow together. But, uh, you know, he just, he truly walks the ground, you know, owns the ground he walks on. He's very confident in his shoes. Um, you know, he's a friend first. You know, he's not a boss first. He's a friend first. He's a mentor first. And then, uh, you know, then then he, you know, crosses the T's and dots the I's when it comes to work. But uh, I think that's kind of the way we go about our business here is, you know, we're a bunch of brothers, you know, and, and you know, we have our arguments and we have our, you know, you know, we don't always believe in, you know, each other's statements, but uh, everything's transparent. We work it through it and we, we, you know, we start over the next hour, next day. So, uh, you know, and then also he has an extremely strong faith. Um, and that's very, very, very crucial, uh, you know, for this industry and, and, and for having so many people underneath your wing. Like there's, there's so many people here that he has to uh, organize every single day. So uh, I think that's one of the cool things. Absolutely. I'm just kind of wrap up here. What what kind of challenge could you give our listeners? Is maybe you can spin this in a football way or a Louisville way, but what kind of challenge can you leave us with as we kind of sit? Like you said, you got your players starting to come back next week in groups, um, but what can you challenge us with at this point? Man, fill the stadium. Fill the stadium. <laughs> if they allow you in the stadium, fill the stadium. Uh, that that's one. You know, our players, our coaches we thrive off it. I mean, it is, you guys are awesome. Um, be loud, as loud as you can possibly be. Um, and, and just, you know, and, and just be positive and be positive. But, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think one of the things that you, I think a lot of fans don't understand is like, they're part of the culture, you know, they create excitement just as much as I create excitement. So, um, you know, when, when you're tweeting something or, uh, you're saying, you know, whatever, you're, you're walking by a player, just be positive. You know, you're part of the culture. You're the reason why we do these things. And uh, they're the, the, you know, they're a lot of, you guys are a lot of the reason why they work so hard every single day and wake up early and eat as much food as they possibly can do and run as hard as they can. So, you know, we do it for you guys and we do it for each other. Uh, you guys are part of our family. So you're part of the culture. So our, our culture is family love trust respect uh and positivity so just keep it you're going you guys are awesome uh i love being part of louisville's culture it's a it's one of a kind for sure you know uh besides the ponies we're you know we're the only horse and pony in in the race here so it's fun to be around the people are great so you guys just keep on going and just keep on filling the stands the more you cheer and the more positivity we can bring to a cardinal stadium we're gonna uh you know they're gonna get better and better 
Absolutely, man. I'm I'm feeling fired up. I'm ready to go. <laughs> so for, friendly reminder, we, we like to <laughs> we like to throw this in there, but like you know the the CDC stuff and all the social distancing guidelines. Like let's keep following them so we can have some football, you know. That's and right. uh, from a very real fan standpoint, I think it's it's really encouraging, Coach Mike, to just hear you the way that you talk about SAT and the way that you talk about um, your players and just how you view football and you view the, view the program and weightlifting. It's just super encouraging. Um, and I, I think there's no doubt that the program's headed in the right direction. So oh, I appreciate that guys. It's been awesome being on here. Let's do it again sometime. Sounds good. Let's we really it. appreciate having you on coach. Yeah. Maybe we'll get after the eight weeks of training, we're going to camp. We're going to see how our guys did or something. Sounds good. That'd be a, yeah. We'd love, we'd love to be able to have an update. That'd be awesome. Sounds good coach. All right, Thanks fellas, again for joining us. Safe. You right, too. Bye. See ya. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the Back to the Bricks podcast. We'd love for you to leave us a review wherever you listen to podcasts, send this podcast to a friend, or share this episode on your Instagram story. We'll see you back on the Bricks next time.